So I will discuss the demand and supply analysis. For the first one, um, I discuss ko yung projected demand. So since uh, dito sa nakita nyo sa screen, we have the projected population. So let's assume that yung business is located in Tugbuk. So you need to get the total population of Tugbuk area. So um makikita natin yan siya through um fill at last yung website na isenend ko or yung link na naisend ko sa inyo sa group chat, no? So just search uh, fill at last sa fill at last, doon nyo makikita kung ilan yung population. According to the data, they have like 21,927 um, total population as of 2020. So, latest na ito siya. So, ito yung gagamitin natin doon sa population. So, from the format, uh, what you have to do is to replace or input the total population. So, for the annual increase, Um, pwede nyo i-search sa Google yung growth rate. So, like this, yung tugbok denotes a positive growth rate of 8.15%. This is as of 2020. Assume that you will start by 2022. So, we need to get the population. So, what you have to do is um, 21,927 multiplied by 1 or 100% of 21,927 plus 8.15% or in decimal or convert natin in decimal point. So, what you have to do is to drag lang until 2024. So, for the average household member, 4.06. Our basis is coming from fill at last. So, yun yung source natin to get the um, household um, average, no? So, which is 4.06. So, to get the number of household, average household divide by Um, the population of 2022, which is 25,647. So, yung total is 6,307. For your 2023, we have 6,832. And for 2024, we have 7,389. For the projected demand figure, this should be present to your business plan under marketing plan so you already have the projected population from the previous table so the question now is how many from your respondents would like to buy your product so let's assume that um we have 15 percent from the total household yung um magpapurchase so projected population multiplied by 15% or you can convert it to decimal point so you will have um, 948 for 2022 and so on for 2023 and 2024 let's proceed to average frequency of purchase so paano natin nakuha yung 104 na frequency. ba diba we have uh, in your survey yung frequency of purchase ng respondents. We have um, once a week, twice a week, or thrice a week. So, let's assume that, that the respondents have chosen 20% for once a week, 50% for twice a week, and 30% for thrice a week. Now, um, to give weight no, para dito sa ating um, answers ng respondents, yung pinakamalaki, which is the 50%, will give the highest weight, which is 3. So, the total weight is 6. Now, to get the FOP annual, what we have to do is um, 
for once a week. So, 1 multiplied by 4 weeks in a month times 12 months in a year. So, we have 48. For twice in a week, we have 2 multiplied by 4 weeks in a month multiplied by 12 months in a year. We have 96. And for the thrice in a week, 3 multiplied by 4 times 12 months in a year, we have 100. 44. Now, to get the weighted annual FOP, what you have to do is um, FOP annual multiplied by weight is equals to weighted annual FOP. So, 48 multiplied by 1 is equals to 48. For twice a week, we have 3 multiplied, uh, 3 multiplied by 96, we have 288. And 2 multiplied by 144. We have 288. So the total weighted annual FOP is 624. So 624 divided by 6. So the average FOP is 104. So now, yun na yung ating um, average frequency of purchase. So let's assume that the number of order per customer is only one uh, per uh, B set. Now, the projected demand is um, the total target market buying from the industry multiplied by the average frequency of purchase multiplied by the number of order per customer. So, for 2022, we have 948 multiplied by 104 multiplied by 1 is equals to 900 or 98,544. So, same formula with 2023 and 2024. Okay, so as I mentioned, that the projected demand should be um, present on your business plan and the rest of the computation will be on the appendices. So, for the supply computation, what you have to do is to look for the data ng um, number of orders ng competitors. Let's say, for example, si LMN Co. has a total annual orders of 12,000. And si ABC Co., which is the, your second competitor, has 15,200 um, annual order per year or an annual order since you have to know um, the number of competitors within your area so kahit isa or dalawa that will be fine and yung nakalagay na others you need to consider um, other competitors na hindi naman sila registered because um, competitors mo pa rin sila so assuming that um, in 2019, you have 42,400. No? Now, for your um, projected supply, let's say, for example, the expected increase is 5% per year. So, the computation for 2022 is 42,400 multiplied by 1%. Uh, 0 0.05 is equals to 44,520. So, for 2021, 44,520 multiplied by 1.05 is equals to 46,746. And so on and so forth up until 2024. Since you will start your business in 2022, so on your projected supply, year 1, you have 49,083. For year 2, you have 51,537. And year 3, you have 54,114. So this projected supply must be present on your business plan. Now for the demand and supply analysis, so, you need to present the year 1, um, 2022, 2023, 2024. 
so just copy the demand on the first um, table and the supply then for the ds gap what you have to do is um demand minus supply is equals to ds gap so 84,493 minus 49,083 is equals to 35,410. So the same formula for 2023 and 2024. So, so for the percent answer, what you have to do is DS gap divide by the demand. So let's say for example, 35,410 Divide by 84,493 is equals to 41.91%. So, for the market share computation, so your sales in unit divide by the supply plus your sales in unit. So, let's say for example, um, on a year 1, 7,082 over... 56,165 which is coming from the supply in 2022 which is 49,083 plus the sales per unit which is the 7,082. You have to um, get the percentage by dividing your sales in unit over supply plus your sales in unit. So, it's equal to 13%. Meaning, out from the total sales of the entire industry, the company has a 13% market share. The market share should also reflect to your business plan.